Hi, I'm Debbie and welcome to Book and Bujo, where I talk all things books and stationery. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to, and let's get started on my January wrap-up. Let's start out with some stats. I got my handy little cheat sheet here because there's a lot of books. So I read 16 books total. And I read 7,034 pages, which equates to about 226 pages a day. Um, now, I was stuck on a plane for eight hours for a two and a half hour plane ride. We were on the plane for eight hours. Well, we were in the airport for an hour and a half. They made us get off the plane and get back on. But yeah, that was a long day. But I read a lot of pages during that time. I listened to 209 and a half hours of audiobook, uh, which is about 6.75 hours a day, so six and three quarters hours a day. Uh, but I typically li listen at one and a half speed, so that would be about four and a half hours a day. So like when I'm prepping food or getting ready for things, if I'm cleaning the house, I d tend to listen to audiobooks during that time. So I started six series and completed zero of them, but that's okay. It was just the first month. All right, for star ratings, I had a zero one star, which is wonderful. I did have one two star book, which was sad. Um, two three star books, 10 four star books, which is amazing, and three five star books. So what a great start to January. So my average rating ended up being 3.9 stars just because of that one two star that I had. For a uh, book type, I did listen to seven audiobooks, read three ebooks, read two physical books, which actually, I think I ended up reading three physical books, uh, and then um, five mixed media. So that's kind of where that third one is. So I listened to some on audiobook while reading the physical book, also audiobook while uh, reading the ebook, which is kind of my favorite thing to do. I do like doing both at the same time that helps you catch things a little more often than you think you would. Uh, format was 14 regular standard standard novels and then two novellas. For genres, I read one classic, one sci-fi, one mystery, two nonfiction, and 11 fantasy, which is no surprise because I love fantasy. So that my highest rated book was The Sword of Kaigen, which was a reread. And for my best book because I don't, I try not to count rereads as like my favorite book of the month. So my favorite book of the month was Of Darkness and Light. Now technically I did start this book in November and I read about 130 pages, but it's an 832 page book. So I still read 700 pages of it in January. That's what I read while I was stuck on the plane. And so I'm counting that as a January read. A sourcing, I got two from my library. I hauled zero of them. Uh, I did borrow seven and then I already owned seven of them. Publication dates. Basically, I read one from a whole bunch of different years except for 2022, I read two. So I read anywhere from 1955 to 2022. So I am wearing the hat that my niece made for me for Seattle Seahawks, so very fun. I like it. Keeps my head nice and warm. All right, so let's talk about some of these books that I read. So we will start with, so Alfred Hitchcock, A Life in Film, and this is by Richard Schickel. And it's a short biography on Alfred Hitchcock that were taken from chats that uh, the author and Hitch had uh, throughout the latter part of his career. The writing style, style is a bit dry, but it is insightful. And I found some new things that I didn't know about Alfred Hitchcock and just how creative he was. It was amazing. So next I read A Prelude to Ashes, which is the prequel to the Ashes of Averin series by Tiago Abdallah. And this one, it was really good. It's, so it's, I feel like it was like a fantasy version of um, Romeo and Juliet. I don't know what's going on with my hair here. Weird things going on. Okay. So it's a fantasy version of Ro Romeo and Juliet. Prince Adrian and Princess Mira are from two different countries and their fathers are both the king and of their country and they are basically mortal enemies to each other. That makes it hard for them 
to be friends, to get along, or to let their families know that they love each other kind of a thing. The prequel takes about it takes place about a hundred years before the first book in the Ashes of Avarin series. There's a lot of action, there's a lot of political intrigue, there's griffins, hello, uh, and a very interesting magic system. So I look forward to reading the next or the first book in the series. I really enjoyed The Prelude to Ashes and that one I did give four stars. Alfred Hitchcock, A Life in Film, I gave um, three stars to that one. So I read Conscious Capitalism by John Mackey and Raj Sisodia, the co-CEOs for Whole Foods at the time this was written. This was before uh, they sold the business to Amazon. How being a conscious, conscious capitalism business needs to be a conscious decision. It needs to be authentic and sincere. It's not just about making money. Uh, it's also about helping people, not just your employees, but also the stakeholders, your suppliers, anyone that has anything to do with your business, that your business, anyone that your business touches. So you can't go into it, business, a job, your life, etc with a thought to just make money. So you need to make a conscious decision, work on different aspects of yourself. So your, your EQ or your emotional intelligence, your SQ, your spiritual intelligence, and never stop listening. I enjoyed it, gave it four stars. I would recommend it. Okay, and then I read Heartless by Marissa Meyer. And this one was for the JNR Book Club with Jashi Curran. And it's kind of a prequel to Alice in Wonderland. So I'm not, a huge fan of the books of Alice in Wonderland. I enjoy the movies, I enjoy the concept, but it's a little too all over the place for me. There, I, I like a little more structure, I guess. Um, but it was a, a, f a fun read. There's some some issues with the books, um, with the book, especially with the main character. There's some emotional and verbal abuse from the mother to the daughter, Catherine, the main character, um, mostly around weight. So there's a lot of body shaming and things like that. Like, oh, if you even look at cake, then you're going to gain weight and you can't fit in your dress and things like that. So just if that's something that's triggering for you, um, just be aware that that is throughout the entire book. And it was a little off-putting to me. That's something that, that bothers me. I'm not a fan of body shaming. Basically it's, it's her mother's constantly criticizing her daughter. She has her daughter's life all planned out for her and, and so there's a little bit of conflict there but the, the Catherine, I, I wanted her to stand up for herself more. I did love all the familiar characters so the White Rabbit and the Mad Hatter and like some of the familiar characters, Cheshire Cat that you love in the original book all make an appearance in this book which is great. I absolutely loved his, uh, Jest. He was my favorite character in the book. I did enjoy the book. I gave it four stars. It was entertaining uh, but you know thinking about it after the fact you kind of think about some of these things and you're just like mm, mm, not so sure about those. Uh, but yeah four stars. Entertaining. Kind of a, one of those not quite a guilty pleasure read but along those lines. Then I read Lolita. So Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. This was my two star read. So I did give it two and a half stars. The writing is really good. Like Vladimir Nabokov knows how to write a story. My biggest issue with this was the, the content itself. So it's basically a fictional book fashioned as a memoir of a pedophile. And there's incest and just a really hard topic to read a book on. It was 376 pages. The only positive I had about the book was that the audio book, audio book was read by Jeremy Irons. I listened to it at two speed, two times speed. If I could have listened to it two and a half, I would have to get through it even faster. Um, that's all I'm gonna say. Okay, next up, Steelheart, which is the first book in the Reckoner series by Brandon Sanderson. I did give this one four stars. I loved this one. It was so much fun needing something to, happy and fun to read after Lolita. Um, Steelheart just fit the bill. Great. It felt like kind of like a comic book in novel form without all the pictures and everything. Uh, it also felt a little bit like The Boys a TV series but made for like middle grade YA. So I would say upper middle grade low YA. I really enjoyed it. The writing style was good. It was engaging, easy to read. There was full of action. There's revenge. There's humor. There's uh, also a lot of like 
heart to heart kind of things, just all the feels. It was great. Highly recommend it. Gardens of the Moon. So this was an Amazon borrow. So I did read it on my Kindle, but then I had to return it. So I no longer have it. And this is the first book in the Malazan Book of the Fallen. So I did learn how to say that. It's not Malazan, it's Malazan. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments, but I'm pretty sure it's Malazan. Book of the Fall Fallen, the first book by Steven Erickson in the series. I did give this one three and a half stars. Now, I feel on a reread, I would give this a four, four and a half star. So I also listened to this one on audiobook. So I did both and that helped. I almost think if I had just read it physically, I think I would have gotten more out of it. I think the audiobook was, I was, it was moving me too fast and too quickly through the story. It was kind of hard to keep up with all, there's so many characters. It's the first books, so you're getting introduced to everything, the world, the characters, all the different countries and the different species that are there within that world, the, the magic system and everything all at once. And so it, it was a, it was a lot to take in and figure out. Um, so I'm glad, I, I am glad that I just read it. I didn't stop and try and analyze everything. I'm like, just enjoy the book and just read it through. And then at some point, come back and reread the whole series. So that's kind of what I'm doing. So it's very fast paced, lots of characters, cool magic systems throughout. But I already have some characters that I'm kind of attached to. So I will, I'm loving Tattersall, uh, the crone or the crow, uh, Kruppa who totally reminds me the whole ta time he would be speaking. I'm just like, is this Jar Jar Binks? Like totally made me think of Jar Jar Binks from Star Wars. So just the way he words things and everything. So Kruppa is very fun. Uh, Whiskey Jack, Quick Ben, um, One Arm, like the, there's just so many great characters in this series because I didn't realize that we were reading Gardens of the Moon for December, I thought it started in January. I was like, oh, now I have to read Dead House Gates. Uh, so the second book in Malazan Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson. So that one I did give four stars. So I'm, I was already kind of figuring out who the characters were a little bit. I'm still a little confused about which, which faction they all kind of belong to and who's with who, but it, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I'm glad I was part of the live show for Gardens of the Moon because they did say, the character is going to be all different. So there'll, there'll be some characters from the first book that make their appearance, but there's going to be a whole lot of new characters. So that was helpful. So I went into it kind of thinking, okay, this is going to be a new book. Think of this as kind of a first in the series. So we have a whole new set of characters. Uh, there's some familiar faces. So there are some characters from the first, first book that do come over, which helps. We also find ourselves on a different continent in the world, which is fun because then you get to see the perspectives from the other side. You're not just in the same place all the time. The atmosphere and the world building are stellar. They're so good, it's so immersive, and that just shows how good the writing is as well, because I just could feel like you're there. The Jackal, contemporary mystery thriller with fantasy aspects of it. This is about a girl who went through a traumatic time when she was in high school, and one of her friends from her grade was attacked while they were in the woods and she has now graduated she's moved on she's left she moved away so I believe this is a town in Pennsylvania and she moved to New York was like I'm out of here and she comes back for her best friend's wedding who still lives in the small town in Pennsylvania at the wedding reception the main character Liz is supposed to be watching the daughter of her best friend Mel and the daughter goes missing and as she Liz is trying to figure out what's happening. She finds out that there's been multiple girls that have gone missing in the woods or near the woods of their town. And the more she digs into it, the more she gets invested in it and is trying to figure out what is happening. And this was great. It was a page turner. I mean, the, the pages, the margins are big. The font is big. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty easy to get through. And I love the multiple perspectives in here. You don't, you get perspectives not just from Liz, but there's also chapters on some of the different missing girls. So you kind of get, get to see way back at whatever time period they were in, whichever year they went missing, you get to find out a little bit of their story, which is kind of interesting. Keeps you guessing the whole time. Like, oh, I think it was this guy. Oh no, maybe it was this person. Oh, is it this person's involved? Oh, maybe they're involved. And 
and the relationship with Liz and her mother is also very interesting. Explains a little bit about Liz's personality as well. I also highly recommend this one. It was very good. And thank you to my library for um, getting this and so I could read it. Okay, next was uh, Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. This is the second book in the Dark Artifices series. So we are following Emma Carstairs and the Julian Blackthorn and the rest of the Blackthorn family. And they were first introduced in the last book of the Mortal Instruments series, so the Sixth City of Heavenly Fire. This one is probably my favorite Cassandra Clare book so far in this series. The twist at the end, just, it was amazing. Amazing. So I love that there's mentions of favorite characters from some of the other series, like Shadowhunter, the Mortal Instruments, as well as the Infernal Devices. There's mentions of them in here. Some of them show up as characters actually interacting with everybody. So of course Magnus is always in all the books because who doesn't like Magnus? Love Magnus. You know, all of the, the Lightwoods are there. Jason Clary are there. Highly recommend. Next up, I read the first and second book from the Discworld series for Around the Disc in 800 with Literary Diversions. So the first one is The Color of Magic by Terry Pratchett, and I gave this one four stars. Wonderfully descriptive. It's easy to follow, and it's just, it just has quirky characters, and it's a fantastical world, and it's just so much fun. I loved it. The second book, The Light Fantastic, again, you have the two still the same two main characters, which is great. And I loved all the new characters that were introduced as well. So much fun. It's humorous. It's easy to read. It helps to just brighten your mood. If you're not having a great day, you just need a quick little pick me up. I, I think of these books as having like a couple bites of chocolate and makes you feel good again. So they're just, they're just so much fun. It's yeah. <laughs> So the first book I read in January, thank you to my extra long flight, was Of Darkness and Light by Ryan K. Hill, and this is the second book in the Bound and the Broken series. Uh, I can't say enough good things about this series. It is just amazing. The writing style between the first book and from the first book to the first novella to this book is amazing. It's I feel like he took a master class somewhere in between the first book and this one and is just went like 10 steps ahead in his writing and the first book was really it was good this one is amazing i can't wait to read war of war and ruin that just came out this book has a little bit of everything there's humor and sorrow there's action there's times of calm there's pain there's joy I, I love seeing the friendships and the bonds that are made there, the interactions, um, the selflessness of some of the characters. So we continue in Kaylin's perspective, which is what the first book basically is, is mainly just Kaylin's perspective. Kaylin, Colin, not sure how to say the name. Uh, but now we also follow a whole new set of characters. So a bunch of these characters we already know, but we haven't been in their perspective before. So we have Dan and Rist and Ella. So Dan and Rist are Kaylin's friends, Ella's his sister, Dolan, Dan, and Kalinvar. Like we get all of their point of views, the their perspectives. It's great. And since we have so many more perspectives that we're following, we also get to know so much more about the world. So we get to be in this area where Kaylin is, or over here where Rist is, and over here where Ella is. And it's great. I love seeing um the different worlds and how things start to form together and, and you can just see a broader picture of everything and see how it all fits together um, as, as, a, as a world. The twists and turns and reveals had me just page turning and turning and turning which was great because I had eight hours to read it and I was so glad I did. I was able to just like binge the whole book. It was great. My best book of January besides uh, Sword of Kaigen which was a reread. Okay, so next up for the Catch-Up Book Club with Becca and the Books and the whole crew is The Bleed Itself by Joe Abercrombie. This is the first book in the First Law Trilogy. And this one was so interesting. So this one, the writing style is really easy to read and easy to follow. Uh, the characters are great. Uh, Logan Ninefingers and Glockta, Inquisitor Glockta, are two of my favorite characters, which I'm sure most people love them. They were great. I love them. 
Uh, the world building is so good. The real standouts are the characters and the character building and the interaction between all of the characters. Four stars. So good. So I loved all the humor and the one-liners. Some characters I wasn't as fond of, but that was okay because you're not supposed to like them. You know, they're they're super pompous or maybe they're just the one of the evil ones, you know. So you're not supposed to like them. So it was good. It got the right reaction out of me. And the plot can be, I feel like the plot's a little hard to follow as you're jumping back and forth between storylines and the different characters, but I feel like it's laying the groundwork for the rest of the series. Okay, so next up, The Sword of Kaigen. This was a reread. So the first time I read this, I had the Amazon borrow on my Kindle and I was able to grab the paperback. It was on sale for like five bucks, so I snagged it. So that's my second reread of it. And then I also was able to join in the Kickstarter for the hardcover. And of course, as soon as that comes in, I'll it'll be back on my TBR and I'll be rereading it for a third time. To me, it's that good. Emma Wang does such an amazing job of getting you so invested in your characters. I don't know if I've ever been so invested in the characters that I've been reading about. Like it just hit me in the feels for all of them. There's some things that happen throughout the book and I forgot on the reread how close to the beginning of the book it was. I thought it was all towards the end, but it was like, I forgot it was like towards the middle and I was just like, oh, again, like it, it hit me even more because I already knew the characters and oh, such a great story. I loved it even more than the first time. The relationship and character development is amazing and I can't believe how quickly I became invested in all the characters both times. It was amazing, like all of the characters. There were some, that, some of the characters you just you don't like, but by the end you, you understand why they are the way they are, which is great. Um, the magic system is super interesting and so they can control waters, so they can make ice, they can make spears out of ice and things like that is so interesting. Um, I loved getting the multiple POVs that are in the books. You're not just following one or two people. So Momoru um, is my standout character of, this, of the month. I love his perspective, but I also love that you get his mom's perspective, you get his dad's perspective, you get old friends' perspectives and, and things like that. It's, it's just great. I love watching them all learn and grow and how the story progresses and how their lives progress and, and standing up for yourself and not buying into to lies and propaganda and things like that. Great book. I highly recommend. All right, what else did I read? So The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan, the first book in the Wheel of Time series. And so I have, I've never read the series before, but I did watch the movie, not the movie. I watched the TV series and we enjoyed it because we didn't really know anything about it. So there was nothing to compare it to, but we did enjoy the TV series on its own. I think it helped to for my brain to be able to um, figure out who the characters were a little more quickly. Um, things were able to click into place a little bit. So even if their personalities or whatever or scenes weren't the same, at least I kind of had a, a reference to begin with. It was a great start to the series, a bit slow paced. I had to let Walter in, he was <laughs> barking to come in. <laughs> wanted to come in and he wanted to come say hi. <laughs> so The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan again. I did really enjoy both. I'm glad I had a reference for the characters to begin with. I think that helped especially since I'm reading so many high epic fantasies this season. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's hard to get it's easy to get the worlds and the people and all of that kind of stuff confused because I have the Wheel of Time series, I have the First Lodge series, the Way of Kings I started as well. So there's a lot of high epic fantasies in there that I'm reading, so it's it, I'm glad I had a little bit of that reference. Malazan, Book of the Fallen, you know, all of those. <laughs> oh, he's gonna kick me out again. <laughs> okay, here we go, let's move you back a little bit. There we go, okay. 
what else? So I think that was actually all of the books. So that worked out nicely uh, before I get kicked out of my chair. <laughs> How did your reading go in January? Were you able to finish your TBR? So what was your favorite book this month? Let me know in the comments. So thank you so much for joining me today as I went through my January wrap up. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me in the future. And I will catch you next time. Bye.